Welcome back everybody to BeamNG Drive and uh, yeah today we are looking at a brand new vehicle that has been added to the game in a recent update uh, it's the Abishu Widgeon uh, which is basically a more futuristic version of the Pigeon and uh, yeah more specifically this is the LX model which is, was made between 1985 and 1997 it's got nicer wheels, sport exhaust, mud flaps and an extra mirror over the uh, more base version and uh, yeah this uh, game has not just uh, updated with a new vehicle but the uh, Pigeon itself has been remastered we have a version 2 version of the uh, grid map which as I'll uh, zoom out as you can see it's been infinitely made bigger yeah it's about five six times bigger than the original maybe even more than that you've got destruction bits which is what I'm on now then you've got the uh, suspension bits which are over here then you've got uh, terrain you've got uh, off-road elements and everything here so uh, yeah it looks like they've improved the uh, kind of uh, aspects that you can add into your own maps because there's so many different now uh, surfaces that have been added and the like and uh, yeah there's been other updates as well which we'll uh, get to in a minute uh, but obviously we're more concentrating on this car and uh, yeah it's got 34 horsepower and 37 pounds feet of torque from its 550 cc inline free engine but it only weighs 1168 pounds so yeah it's got no real weight to lug around can do 0 to 16 19 seconds but it only has a top speed of 76 but Quite frankly, given it's only got three wheels, 76 is more than enough. So, uh, yeah, as per usual with these reviews, we're going to go around the grid map and uh, see what destruction we can wreak on this car before it gives up. Then we'll roll it over in a, on a uh, sled and then we'll blow it up and then we'll crash it through some cinder blocks. So, uh, yeah, there's uh, a lot of uh, different elements now that we can uh, use to uh, really give the destruction to this car. We can. Uh, trim the car a little bit but obviously this is a really small car so uh, we'll only do that <laughs> but even so that is still ridiculous uh, yeah the engine does get starved of oil quite easily because it's that small but yeah a, another update that's been given to this game which in terms of destruction is that you can now uh, fracture the oil pan which means obviously that you can lose oil quite quickly obviously we could already uh, damage the engine uh, oil wise by rolling it over and leaving it upside down but now we can also uh, damage it by uh, cracking the oil pan in the engine so uh, yeah which I've already done in this car in testing as well as a couple of other vehicles that have already been in the game so uh, yeah I'm looking forward to seeing what we can uh, do in that regard whether or not this can handle that so uh, yeah let's go on some jumps obviously with very little in the way of weight a jump isn't going to be as damaging as it would be to another car but what will be damaging is the suspension area so we're going to go to that now now that we've trimmed it and jumped it a little bit so yeah, luckily the suspension area is not too far away it's just over here come on you can do it oh maybe you can't damn it oh well let's back up yeah, 34 horsepower is clearly not enough even to uh, lug this little thing up. And obviously being with three wheels, it's easy to throw this over by accident. I think this is where the suspension area is. Yes, it is. Luckily, they have labelled all of the areas as well, which is really nice to see. So you just don't, so you don't get lost. And uh, yeah, like I was saying, there's loads of different uh, surfaces that have been added. You've got these little knobbly uh, paving stones, which are quite commonplace in countries like the UK and other places in Europe and yeah you've got your speed bumps you've got your wavy uh, bumps there you've got these here which are trying to simulate like a uh, rough paving which as you can see the suspension is working overtime to keep it on for the flat and level rode it and we've rolled over again uh, but we're alright this car's good at rolling itself over again like the original pigeon to be honest and yeah, I love these as well. You've got these, uh, you know, 20th century, early uh, 19th century, late 19th century uh, kind of paving as well. So yeah, it's going to throw up all sorts of new uh, surfaces that uh, people can use for their own maps, which is always good to see. But this car really isn't good at dealing with these kind of things, as you'd expect, being so lightweight and free wheels.
really hates them. Oh, and it really hates that as well. I didn't realize it was going to do that. So, uh, yeah, there we go. We've broken the engine and the drive shaft. So, uh, yeah, but it is rear uh, wheel drive, rear engine, and it has a. Uh, I think it's rear engine. Or is it in the front? No, it can't because of the wheels there. Yeah, I think it's rear engined. But I know it's got a three speed manual gearbox. But then again, that doesn't really matter with so little horsepower. Right, so let's get to the uh, rollover sled. Which we're able to place a lot closer this time round because the map is a lot more spread out, being so much bigger. So yeah, they've also updated elements to these this game. The uh, tr uh, trailer, the caravan trailer, has been updated as well. Which is nice to see. And uh, yeah, I think everything has pretty much had a visual improvement. Obviously some mods might well be a little bit different in terms of their textures and stuff because they've not had the chance to be updated yet because this only came out today, this uh, update, but either way. It's really nice to see that they have uh, continuing to give this game even more improvements and even more additions because, yeah, this game is incredible and uh, the more they add to it the better it just gets, quite frankly. So uh, yeah, this car's roof is not particularly strong does roll nicely though, as we'd expect from a uh, a pigeon, uh, a futuristic, more, a more futuristic pigeon even. But, on the whole it survived that, despite the bodywork damage. And only the rear section of the roof has peeled down, not the uh, part where anyone would be sat, so that's good. We've also improved the traffic light system for the East Coast uh, map, which will also be added to the other s uh, standard BMG maps as well. Which again, it's nice to see. We'll probably review the original Pigeon at some point as well now that it's got a remaster. It'll be interesting to see how it's uh, been uh, changed. Obviously, when they do a remaster, they do change the way it crashes at times and what it can and can't handle. It's like the bodywork is falling off now, so uh, yeah, that'll be a catastrophic failure if that's going to happen. You do not want to be in a car that's where the bodywork falls off completely from its chassis. I don't think that would uh, go well down with uh, your end cap or any other safety body quite frankly I'm not sure what's still keeping it on to be honest if it was shuffling around that much when we drove it but it has still hanged on in there so it's not a failure per se, but as you can see by the uh, amount of that it's actually moving at the rear, it's really not longed for this water. Although it's not coming off completely when I hold it in the air, so uh, yeah, maybe it's just a certain element that is uh, broken to make it look even more dramatic. But nonetheless, I think it overall passed the uh, rollover test. So let's uh, see what happens when we blow it up. Now, obviously, this is an extremely lightweight vehicle, and uh, yeah, so I'm not expecting it to survive this. Even if it's not going to be particularly quick going up to these. Oh dear. Well, there goes the front wheel. Pretty much stopped dead in its tracks. Uh, the fuel tank's gone. And yeah, we are not going to be driving anywhere. Although, obviously, the engine still works, and so does the drive train, but obviously our lack of a front wheel is not going to let us drive forwards. And, yeah, the entire chassis has bent. Yeah, everything's pretty much been destroyed on that. It's just pretty much the rear that has survived it, because, obviously, we hit it with the front. So, uh, yeah, big failure there. No win for the widgeon there. So, uh, yeah, let's finally see what happens when we hit into a uh, cinder block wall, 
Now again, we are lightweight, we are extremely small, so we're uh, not expecting it to survive this as well. Again, though, we're not going particularly fast, but again, we've pretty much stopped dead because of how lightweight we are and how little speed we were having. And yeah, the Cinderblock Wall has stopped us dead. But on the whole, there, I think the bodywork held up to the Cinderblock Wall okay. And interior wise, yeah, we seem to be okay as well. So, uh, yeah, not a uh, fail there with the Cinderblock Wall, but definitely a fail with the uh, Crash Hard Barrels. And I don't think it particularly survived well around the grid map, but it did survive the Cinderblock Wall and the rollover. So uh, yeah, two for uh, two uh, two all really, pretty much there. So uh, yeah, let's get to the uh, crash hall and see what this can do at 30 and 40 mile an hour overlap crash tests and whatever speed we'll be able to get up to after that, because I'm not sure this could do 60 on that map. But regardless, let's get there and see what happens. Right, so here we are at the crash hall. I'm not sure if it's ever going to get to 60, but we'll start off with the 30 and 40 mile an hour impacts and just go from there. So, uh, yeah, it'll get up to 30 and 40 easily, but again, like I said, I'm not sure how it will get, if it will get up to 60. And, uh, yeah, if it doesn't, then we'll just uh, floor it and just see what happens in terms of anything after 40. So, uh, yeah, but even so, either way, I'm not expecting this to be a uh, massive success, to be honest. Because obviously it's extremely small, lightweight, and not particularly uh, looking like a safe car. But actually that 30 mile an hour impact was okay, to be honest. Obviously it's rolled over now, which is not a, a good way to uh, obviously, uh, you know, deal with a uh, crash test. But obviously we uh, roll back right onto our wheels and the steering wheel hasn't moved, the roof hasn't really much caved in. And the doors haven't massively popped out either. So, uh, yeah, 40 mile an hour impact. Let's see what it can do with that. Again, we will get up to that, but I'm really fearing that it's not going to get up to 60, which is a shame because obviously I would like to see what it can do at that kind of speed. But either way, let's see what it can do at 40. Now, obviously, we have seen differences in 30 and 40 mile an hour impacts before. So, uh, yeah, let's see what happens with this. If there's any major difference. Yeah, that's a bit of a difference. Yes, the whole body flexed and moved around there. The chassis itself has bent down, which is never a good sign. But the steering wheel still hasn't really moved. Obviously, that's probably because we're on a right-hand drive car and we're hitting it with the left-hand side. But either way, the general interior has survived that. But again, the bodywork and everything else hasn't particularly well. So... Uh, yeah, right, let's see what if we can get up to 60. I will set it at 60 on the cruise control, but obviously if it doesn't get to that, then it doesn't matter, because as long as we're faster than 40, then that's okay, but I would have liked it to get to 60, but that's just the way it is sometimes. Uh, every car is bound to be as fast as you'd like. Just slowing it down a bit to be a bit more uh, accurate with the uh, steering, because this is quite a twitchy car. Oh dear, everything's come apart. I didn't actually see what speed we were doing, but I know we were doing more than 50, so uh, even if we weren't doing 60, then uh, yeah. If we were actually doing 60, then death would have been a definite. So uh, yeah, there, there we go. Uh, that's the crash hall tests. 30 and 40, you average about thereabouts, but yes, uh, anything more than that, and uh, yeah, you're in for trouble. So, uh, yeah, let's nonetheless get to the highway, and uh, yeah, let's uh, see what we can do against two vehicles that are of similar size to this, and then one that really isn't. Right, so here we are at the highway, and obviously there's not many cars that only weigh 11,168 pounds, so we are going to go up against the original Pigeon uh, with this. Then we'll probably try the Autobello, and then we'll go up against something that's far, far larger than this. So, uh, yeah, let's see if we can get a 60 mile an hour impact between this and the uh, original Pigeon. And let's see what happens. So, uh, yeah, we weigh about the same. And uh, obviously they both have three wheels, so there's not a great deal of protection up front from either of these. 
And I don't even think we're going to get up to 60 with either of them either. So uh, yeah, let's just see what happens. Not going to be dead on because being three wheels have not got the best drive lines, but... Well, I'd say on the whole there, the older one has... Yeah, both of them have done bad. I was going to say the older one looks better. Visually, it does on the whole look a bit better, but... The steering wheels on both of them have shot forward into the driver. Uh, in fact, the one on the widgeon has shot forward and down, so that would pin your legs and everything else. So, uh, yeah, I'd say the older one is probably better because it's come towards your chest. Uh, well, again, chest probably isn't good either, so, uh, yeah, both have failed there. So that is not giving me the greatest of hope for it going up against anything heavier. Because, yeah, the original pigeon is about the same as this, so uh, anything heavier and larger is really going to put up a fight. So, uh, yeah, we've got to go up against the Autobello. We'll go up in the 130 because that should at least get up to speed. And we shouldn't have any driveline issues with this because the Autobello is fairly good. Oh dear. Let's reload this just to make sure we can give it a fair fight. Oh dear, what, what's going on here? Oh. I have to reload it because I forgot how uh, bad this car is for staying in a straight line. Goddamn three wheelers. The Autobellos is pretty. F just spurts off to the left for no reason. Oh, that's death. Yeah, the Autobellos is fine as you can see, but with this. Obviously, Otabella's fuel tank has gone, which is never a good safety thing, but outside of that, that is fine. But this has just been devastated. Yeah, you'd have no hope in that whatsoever. Look at the way the steering was just completely shot down. Obviously, the steering is uh, in a in a different um, you know degree to the the way that the uh, original pigeons is made, because obviously the original pigeon. Even though the steering wheel went forwards, it didn't go forwards and down, whereas here it just shoots right down into your lap, which, yeah, isn't good. Right, let's see what go happens when we go up against something far heavier. I'm thinking... Obviously, we go for the Roma a lot of the times, because it's ridiculous how much that things, those things weigh. But I think we'll go up against something that... Oh, screw it, let's go for the Roma, it's going to be funny. Go for the V8, the all-wheel, four-wheel drive version. I think all of the pictures have had an update on this game as well with the update. So, uh, yeah, that's probably why they look a little bit better than normal. Right, so this can easily get up to 60 miles an hour. And it's going to absolutely crush us. There's not, uh, if there's anything left that works on this after this, I'd be surprised. Oh dear, the door's splayed right out. Well, we've flipped the Roma at least, so that's a kind of a victory for the uh, the widgeon here. But yeah, the engine's broken on this. And yeah, the entire cabin has been squished into the space of a cardboard box, effectively. Yeah, there's nothing left of the widgeon there. But the Roma has taken a bit of a beating because it's rolled over. That's why the roof has come down, but the car itself would have survived that perfectly if it hadn't have rolled over. Yeah, nothing left of the widget in there. So yeah, on the whole, not a particularly safe car, which I guess is no surprise given its design and its being a three-wheeler and being so light in weight. But yeah, still a fun addition to the game. And uh, yeah, I'm all for newer cars being added to the game, especially from the developers. So yeah, I uh, highly recommend checking out the update yourself if you've got this game. Because there's more to it than, than I've mentioned or shown off. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.